Duke University in Durham, North Carolina is home to some of the world's leading research on nanotechnologies and their potential impact on the environment. Researchers at the Center for the Environmental Implications of Nanotechnology are trying to understand the relationship between nanomaterials and their potential ecological consequences. Their goal is to predict where certain nanomaterials will go in the environment, how long they will stay there, and what impacts they may have on the entire ecosystem. This research is being directed by Mark Wisner, a professor of civil and environmental engineering at Duke University. Center for the Environmental Applications and Nanotechnology, or SAINT as we refer to it, is doing something that's really very unique in the sense that usually when new technologies come out and we look at their, their possible applications, there's a lot of excitement that surrounds those technologies. And it's often later that we might discover some of the environmental impacts uh, or some of the, the bad things that might happen associated with those technologies. History has shown us that our decisions to pursue certain technologies like DDT, asbestos, or Freon have had some serious environmental consequences. Will nanotechnology be any different? Mark and his team of researchers are trying to answer this question by focusing their research on the environmental impacts of nanosilver. We know that, that silver is toxic. It's been used to disinfect since antiquity. The question is, really, is there anything new and different about nanosilver that's cause for concern? Nano, by definition, relates to anything between 1 and 100 nanometers, or 1 billionth of a meter, and has a novel and unique property associated with it. It's these unique properties, and the potential for novel impacts that we haven't confronted before, that require special consideration. Emily Bernhardt, a biologist for the Center, is focusing her research on identifying the novel impacts of nanosilver. I'm really interested in how new chemicals that humans are producing are going to affect the environment. Um, unintentional releases of chemicals that are produced for particular reasons in consumer products may lead to unintentional consequences in the environment. There are many commercial products containing nanosilver, including toothpastes, socks, stuffed animals, pacifiers, and even medical devices in hospitals, all claiming to kill bacteria. Cole Matson, an environmental toxicologist for the center, explains how silver nanoparticles are used to kill bacteria. The idea behind using silver nanoparticles in a lot of consumer products is that the particles which are adhered to the surfaces of these products will slowly leak off silver ions. And those silver ions are what give it some antimicrobial activity. So theoretically, you protect the surface from the growth of bacteria and other microbes. Bacteria make up the base of the food web. So if ionic silver is toxic to bacteria, what impacts might a change in the bacterial population have on the overall ecosystem? To answer this question, the center began dosing these mesocosms with nanoparticles of silver. So a mesocosm is a controlled release facility. It's a system that allows us to put nanomaterials into a setting which approximates the complexity of nature without endangering nature. We start with very uh, uh, simple suspensions of nanosilver, for example, that we expose fish or plants to in the laboratory. And we try to build from those very simple experiments into more and more complex systems as a basis for having something that's very generalizable and gives us principles that we can apply to uh, a wide variety of systems. David Hinton, professor of environmental quality for the center, is trying to understand how environmental contaminants like nanosilver affect fish. We are using the biological features that the fish show us, i.e. development wild exposed and development in our control unexposed fish and then we subject them to later life stage analyses so that we can determine if the individual fish were impacted by exposure to nanomaterials. If we do see toxicity, is it something that's, a re that's, something that's going to be a deal breaker for using these technologies? In virtually every activity we are involved in, there is an uncertainty. 
The question is, at what point do we have enough information to move forward in the commercialization of a product? And that is a question that can only be answered by interactions between the scientific community, regulatory agencies, industries, and the public at large. I don't think at this point we, have, we should approach nanomaterials as if they are frightening. Uh, one of the important things we need to, to be clear about is that there's a lot of really great environmental impacts or benefits of making nanotechnology. So we can make more efficient fuel cells, lighter cars, better batteries, but we have to be able to separate between those that are giving us a real environmental benefit and those that we're producing for things that we don't really need and may have severe negative consequences to the environment. The research in Saint uh, accentuates uh, trying to understand factors that will control the exposure of nanomaterials, where they go in the environment, and will give us information on how we can best uh, limit exposure to individuals in the environment. Mm -hmm.